everybody. This is right, Science thanks. Bridge webinar series. And uh, my guest today is Lennart Meshaba. Uh, Lenny is a professional medical scientist and he received uh, his bachelor uh, with honors from University of Stellenbosch in the field of biochemistry. And afterwards he moved to Pretoria where he graduated with his master's degree from biotechnology from University of Pretoria. And currently, he's working as a medical advisor in Novartis. So welcome, Lenny. Oh, thank you so much, Martina. Thank you for having me here. Uh, really yeah, look forward to our discussion. Yes, thank you for finding time in uh, this busy period. I know that you are now transitioning to your uh, new role. So I hope we're going to touch upon that as well. Yes. Um, but uh, firstly, I would like to start with your general background. So can you tell us how uh, you got on this path of becoming a scientist, firstly? Yes, uh, so it's been a very exciting journey for me. Uh, firstly, I come from uh, Limpopo, from a rural area um, called uh, Lutrichat, just outside Lutrichat um, uh, in Venda. Um, so I studied there, I mean, <clears throat> my primary schooling, you know, from primary to secondary. When I uh, got my metric, um, then I decided that I really needed to go to the university uh, because I was one of the, you know, uh, well, top performing uh, learners at the school. And another time, you know, doing uh, subjects such as science, uh, physical science and mathematics, uh, we, we were always encouraged, you know, to, to aim for careers that either involve engineering, uh, you know, or science and uh, yeah, all those uh, um, sort of related um, uh, careers. So yeah, from then I applied and uh, got accepted at the University of Stellenbosch. Uh, where I started my undergrad degree um, in uh, bio biological sciences. And I was always interested in chemistry, even from school, you know, and uh, so when I discovered that there's biochemistry uh, at, at the university level, I was really um, interested in that, and I started uh, taking that as my major. And I studied biochemistry until my honors level at the Stellenbosch University, like you just mentioned in my bio, uh, then went on to do it, um, uh, my MSc or master's degree at the University of Pretoria. Yeah, so, and I've always loved science. I've always uh, wanted to be in the lab and research and I always thought you know I can come up with something um, innovative you know <laughs> from the experiments that we conduct in the labs and yeah I'm still enjoying science uh, sort of a science-based role even uh, today uh, yeah so science-based role but how did you get uh, to position of medical advisor because it doesn't sound like you are now experiencing very hands-on science Yes, yes. So it's a, it's a very interesting story how I actually ended up in pharma, in the pharmaceutical industry, you know, from my studies. Uh, so I was in the middle of my master's degree at the University of Pretoria at the time. And, uh, you know, I had some challenges through that uh, program. I mean, I was in the labs doing research. And obviously the research that I was doing, I was solely um, relying on um sort of grants, you know, support uh, grants for, for my tuition and my livelihood at the time. And it was becoming more and more challenging, you know, with the family responsibilities as well, because I mean, you can remember, uh, or uh, I mean, I've never, wa I had never worked until then. I've always studied, you know, from undergrad to honors, from honors mm -hmm. to masters. So the next point was for me from masters to go to the PhD, but it was becoming very challenging and difficult to sustain that, that livelihood, you know. Uh, with the expectations also, also from home. Uh, if I may just interject myself here and mention that, in fact, I was the first uh, from my family to go, to have an opportunity to go and study at higher institutions of higher learning, like the university. So there was a lot of expectations that, you know, it will be probably a quicker process that I'll go out, get out of that with the qualification that then I will go and work, you know, and obviously become um, uh, a provider, even at home. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I said, I mentioned, I come from a rural area. Yeah, so so I, I I heard of learnerships that were being offered by one of the pharmaceutical companies at the time. It was Aspen Pharmacare, and I actually applied while I was still busy doing the write-ups for my uh, thesis for my MSc, and they accepted me. 
So I joined that leadership program. It was supposed to be for a year period. And based on that, you either got absorbed into the company or, you know, how the leadership program works, you know. Um, so, yes, I got fortunate enough. I worked very hard and I was successful in that program. And I got accepted as uh, one of the successful uh, applicants. And I got a formal um, role uh, within the company as a sales representative, you know, because that was what the that program was for. Uh, but I knew uh, that, you know, for me, I'm not really, sales is not my strongest point. I always wanted, you know, to, to do something with my academic, like, background, my science background. And uh, I knew that the path for me to apply that was to get into a medical role within the pharma uh, space. So that's when I moved from one company to the other. Within the sales role, they might break really to get into the medical, more science-orientated uh, aspect of the job was at Novartis when I became an MSL, uh, Medical Scientific Liaison. And that really is where I excelled a lot. And within a period of a year and a half, I got promoted now into this role that I've just started on the 1st of January as the medical advisor uh, in the respiratory portfolio here at Novartis. Yeah. So, so. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations um, on your next career transition. Um, but Great. if we can just go back quickly to your learnership program. So that was something that Aspen was doing to try to absorb more talent, talent acquisition kind of a thing. Yes. Uh, can you tell us what did you learn there? What, what company was teaching you there? Yes, yes. Oh, well, that's a very good question uh, because... I mean, and that came with a lot of frustration, as you can imagine, for myself, because I really still wanted to to study, you know, like to go higher in my, I, I really wanted to do, pursue a PhD. I mean, I was just finishing my off my MSc degree. And, but because of the pressures of, you know, having been in a schooling system so much, so long, without really an income per se, without providing, I mean, my family didn't understand that. So I really had to go and find something else to sustain myself and also to, to provide something for, for my family. So they only, I searched around, you know, for different programs, um, you know, forms of employment I could find at the time. And as a science graduate, I battled a bit, you know, and that's why when I found out about the leadership opportunity that Aspen was offering, I jumped at that and I was successful in applying for that and they got me in. So I spent, this one was a specific learnership dedicated to training the graduates as medical science, uh, as medical representative, sales representatives, MSR, they called it at the time. So that gave us skills, equipped us in terms of selling. I mean, it was still pretty much learning about the physiology, anatomy for the different, different uh, diseases, you know, I mean, uh, just human biology all over again, human physiology, so that, I mean, based on what products they were offering or they were selling, uh, you could be equipped uh, to, to go and sell either pain medication or diabetic medication. So we were trained in all these disease areas. Uh, but there was no guarantee that you will actually get that job, you know, at the end of that 12-month period. So you still had to really compete with the others. I think we were 10 in the group at the time. So so you literally needed to apply yourself, not only from your science um, know-how and the skills, but also in terms of the ability to sell and the ability to be a sales representative. And I, I, I excelled in that and I did very well. Although, like I mentioned, selling it was just not something that really, uh, yeah, something that it took a lot of energy out of me to really go out there. I consider myself as more of an introverted person, you know, so to go out and try to convince people to buy and uh, things like that uh, was a bit against my personality. So that's why within that, I worked hard still, but always looked for opportunities to get back into the science sort of, uh, uh, the core science role within uh, this, this industry, yeah. So that's how. Yes, you're touching yeah, upon yeah. a very important thing, how uh, it's not important to just have a job and uh, let's say earn the living, but also to actually enjoy it and it has to match your personality. Yes. yes. Uh, so, so, yeah. Sorry, you were... No, it's so true. Yeah, I, was just, I wanted to say, uh, there's a quote I love, uh, and, um, just keeping my, 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 my mind now, but they say, you do something you love, or you never get to work a day in your life, because, you know, you don't consider that, that a job, it's your passion, it's your joy, it's something that fulfills you. I think 
if we can aim for that and it can pay our bills, it, it, it's, it's, it's a great combo, you know, so, because you never feel like you're waking, you know. So, and that's what I enjoy so much. That's about true. Mind. And we spend so much time working. So it's actually a good idea to, to think about doing something that we enjoy instead of just being uh, responsible for a role instead of enjoying it. Yes. But, so now you, from that, you transition to medical science liaison role. Yes. How that differs from sales representative? Um, so uh, science is, is, yeah, it's, that's a very, that's a very good question. So obviously sales representative, their main objective is to sell, you know, to sell medication, um, uh, not to the prescribers, either GPs or specialists. But as a science liaison, you, you play a different role altogether. Uh, it's more about uh, science, it's no longer really selling the, the, the product, but you sell a different value from a company perspective. So we are almost like a link between the clinical research, you know, from the companies, the pipeline, uh, you know, that the company is working on in terms of bringing new medications, you know, onto the market. So, you know, before that launch uh, process can happen, you need medical science liaisons that can go out and communicate. Firstly, the unmet need, in that disease area. So we educate a lot on the disease. The focus is on the patient. It's on that, uh, the stakeholders like your, uh, I mean, your clinicians, how they understand if there's an unmet need, because there's no, there's no point of developing a solution if there's no need for that. So we need to go out into the market and uncover and explore and sensitize the clinicians of the current unmet need. Either the current therapies are not just doing, uh, I mean, the job or most patients, even though uh, they are on the current medications, they are not either controlled, no, the disease is not fully controlled and so on. So as science liaison, you go out there. I um, mean, my job was really a lot of education, a lot of collaboration, uh, bringing this clinical trial results and outcomes and really making them applicable, you know, to the routine clinical practice out there, you know. And so that's, that's where we spend a lot of time on that. So like a, a, a sales representative will be dealing with the product already, the end product that is on the market already registered and uh, being commercialized. But a science liaison, you work more within the scientific realm, you know, like to try and get um, the, the scientific community or the clinicians to really understand the science behind uh, the new solutions or the new treatment uh, that, that are coming onto the market. So yeah, it's, it's a very important phase in any company that plans to launch any new product, any new drug in the market. Um, so that's, 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 that's what I enjoy about that, communicating that science, communicating the, uh, I mean, the clinical trials, what was the uh, primary, secondary endpoint, you know, what were the outcomes, what is the safety outcomes of this medication compared to what is already on the market. So that, that's what really I enjoy about, and it links me back to the laboratories uh, where I was doing some of this research, you know, so yeah. No, definitely. Oh, it it sounds dear. much more um, science related in a way. Um, yes. But I wanted to ask you then your stakeholders are uh, clinicians and uh, mm. scientists. And, and even scientists, um, because obviously the science, scientific societies that you need to engage with, um, I mean, it can be in many forms. Uh, if you're going to talk to the uh, regulatory authorities, you know, to submit your dossiers, you need to talk a scientific language. You need to talk to the scientists, you know, the, who are going to be evaluating those clinical trials and making sure that, uh, I mean, first is efficacious and those medications will be safe for the targeted population. So it's a pretty much science business before it becomes I mean, a tablet that you can take uh, from a pharmacy or, you know, like from a script from a doctor. So that science has to be proper and all the regulations uh, that have to go with that uh, are fully met. So that's why you need a scientist to understand that language, you know, in that space. Yes, it, it sounds very serious, but then how does it uh, work with your introvert character? Well, yeah, I see that's <laughs> so that that's where I uh, when I'm uh, I've got that uh, I know 
the valid uh, I mean, results like from the clinical trials, you know, so like selling. So it's another selling, it's another way of selling, selling this value from clinical trials, the way they were designed, the inclusion criteria. I like discussing those type of concepts, you know, because you still need a buy-in from uh, the other recipient, either a scientist or it might be the regulatory authorities that need to, to register this medication and approve it. So you need to sell those concepts to them. So you need to understand what you're talking about yourself first as a scientist. So the aspect of selling that I didn't like was um, going almost door to door to doctors' practices, uh, almost convincing them, or influencing them. They are scripting habits to try and script uh, like this company's specific um, product against the other. You know, so that because it required a lot of me coming out of my own comfort zone and yeah it's, it's it's like trying to prove that one particular brand is better than the other you know and all of that so it's it's all good and the people that really enjoy that just that for me took a lot of energy and a lot of effort you know out of me to try and um uh, uh, meet those objectives you know so yeah but, so, um, so here you, in this position, you are not going door to door. So how does your day look like or your week maybe? Yes. Okay. So there's still pretty much a lot of um, interactions that we have to do with the medical experts. So in this case, we refer to them as medical experts because we, like I said, we're discussing those deep scientific concepts or either clinical trial data and all of that. So we, we're dealing a lot with, with a lot of key opinion leaders within those specific therapeutic areas. Like for now, I'm working within a respiratory portfolio. So looking at diseases such as uh, asthma or chronic uh, or Attractive, uh, I mean, COPD and you know TB and all of this. So you need uh, to be engaging at that level, you know, um, of 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 specialty. So it's still pretty much a door to door thing. I mean, we need to go out there either it's in the research uh, institutes or clinical practice that you go out. Just that obviously with the pandemic, we're not having a great success with face to face, but we've switched over now to virtual means. Like me and you now are having this discussion, you know. So we have a lot of this on a daily basis where I reach out to, to medical experts, either professors in clinical research at universities, and we, we have discussions on this. What is the pipeline? What is coming in this disease area? So yeah, that's what my, my day entails. And obviously, I do have a lot of responsibilities internally within the organization where I help the brand because we work in multidisciplinary teams, you know, where uh, we work with departments from marketing, uh, from uh, regulatory affairs, uh, from patient access, you know, all these uh, cross-functional teams come together to make sure that uh, uh, when the representative, sales representative go out there with the product uh, to, 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 to actually sell um, to the healthcare um, um, communities out there, you know, everything is above board, everything is proper, so yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's uh, it's actually an exciting role, I must say. So it sounds like there is a lot of uh, cross communication, cross department communication. So uh, communication sounds to me like one of the most important skills for the medical science liaison. Uh, what other skills are important in your current role? Um, so your ability to to network, like you said, communication. You you because you you work within a supportive role. Um, you know, uh, so you have to be able to get along. You have to be able, obviously, to be accountable for your own work as an individual. You know, as a contributor, and you know how to interact with the other stakeholders. You know, uh, because the objective is one to bring medication to the patients out there that really need it. We we have some of the best uh, life saving medication medications, you know, and they have to get the intended uh, target audience. But for that to happen, you need like a scientist like myself, you know, to have made sure that the research that was done in that molecule is safe, is, is efficacious, all of those things. You need uh, people that will make sure that that medication gets to the pharmacy, you know, physically as in like delivering it to the pharmacy, either from the warehouses and so on. You need marketing uh, departments and the pricing and all of these uh, stakeholders together. So, yeah. Um, so you need to be able to collaborate as well uh, in, in teams and, and work well in teams. Yes. And what was the, what were the biggest obstacles, like sticking point when uh, you were trying to get to where you are today? 
Uh, so, yeah, for me, I would say at the beginning of my career, obviously, finding the opportunities, you know, because when you have spent a lot of time at the university and studying as a scientist, you almost are not just exposed to the world out there. Sometimes you think just laterally, like as in, I want from my MSc, I want to do my PhD, maybe from my PhD, I do my postdoc, and maybe I just stay in academia and maybe be a researcher or a lecturer at university. But there's so much out there, you know, uh, that you, you can you can get so many other opportunities that a science graduate can actually get into. It doesn't always have to be a traditional uh, one plus one is two. There's other venues. I mean, I've seen some of my colleagues that actually uh, went and did law, for example, Today, they're working as uh, patent um, attorneys, you know, like they've got solid um, scientific uh, background, but they mix it with something else, you not know, bridge that uh, to another profession. So for me, I would say the most challenging aspect of a scientist, like a science graduate for me was to get to know these opportunities, you know, like there's so much more out there. You don't always have to stay and remain in the lab. So yes, uh, but once I got in my uh, break into the pharma uh, space. That's where I managed to excel. And within there, I still needed to develop and, you know, get myself into uh, position for this uh, role, such as medical advisor. So, uh, yeah. So. And on the closing note, what would be your advice to the current graduates? Uh, I think uh, the current graduates must, like I said, uh, following from my last statement, just just network from early on, like, you know, expose yourself, get to network. Uh, I mean, now there's even LinkedIn uh, platforms like that, where you can even look up to other um, professionals within this uh, uh, uh like now, I mean, you don't get to qualify from university and become a medical advisor. You know, you, there's, there's ways that you need to go uh, before you get there, you know, like um, to develop yourself to that space. Like myself, I started as a sales representative. So I think if you are interested in careers like this, it's good to go out there and reach out to, 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 to professionals that are in those specific prof professions and network as much as you can. Introduce yourself early, clearly define your, your goals, where do you want to end up, where do you want to, uh, uh, what, what goals do you want to reach and yeah, connect yourself with those, uh, with those resources, you know, so yeah. Uh, that's what I would say. Um, yes, I, I think uh, networking is is very important point that people have to remember, and they have to remember also to network with a goal in mind, as you're saying, so yes. that it's not just uh, introducing uh, themselves and throwing the CV, <laughs> but yeah. actually <laughs> being polite, having proper business acumen, um, exactly, not demanding, exactly. respecting people's yeah. time. Yes, so true, so true. And I like the fact that there's other mediums, like uh, I like your, your your YouTube channel, you know, we didn't have that when I was studying. So if we can, that's why I was saying there was so limited information uh, when I was studying and looking for opportunities. But now the social media, you know, you can get in touch like with uh, the Science Bridge project and get to exposure to some of these roles that, that we do. So that is very, very helpful. You know, so, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today. And again, congratulations on your promotion. <laughs> That Thank sounds you so like much. very exciting and uh, stressful time, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a mixed bag, but yeah, I'm really grateful, uh, you know, to have this opportunity as well. So yeah, uh, look but forward I to think, it. But I think you're going to do great. I, From what I hear, you have great background and experience. So I wish you all the best. Uh, if you. anyone wants to reach out to you, um, where could they reach out to you? So my preferred uh, really uh, networking platform is link LinkedIn. Uh, you can look me up on LinkedIn and I always follow up. I do get quite multiple re requests, you know, for connections. And so it's good to build and expand your network, you know. So yeah, anyone who would like to reach out to me, like I've got my profile on LinkedIn and anytime, you know, when I do have time, I do go uh, regularly to check. And uh, and I respond to as many questions, like uh, I do get some career-related questions, you know, some from some of the undergrads even some of the graduates that are looking for opportunities. So yeah, I'll just make time to, to, to okay. respond to that. I will yeah. add your LinkedIn profile then to this description of this video below. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you.